If you were shopping for a top-of-the-line graphics card in the summer of 2000, every PC review website and magazine would have pointed you at the GeForce 2 GTS. It was simply the best, and other rival cards like ATI's Radeon DDR or 3DFX's Voodoo 5 5500 could only hope to squabble over second place. There really wasn't even a contest. ATI did get the closest, however, and if we had more advanced drivers, a faster CPU, what would happen if we reevaluated this once one sided matchup from almost 20 years ago? This is Pixel Pipes. Competing with NVIDIA in their prime must be a completely overwhelming experience. Even before the GeForce 2 GTS was announced on the 26th of April, NVIDIA had signaled that they would be bringing product advances at a frantic six-month cycle. Just a day before, ATI had lifted the curtain on their pride and joy with what ended up being the very first Radeon, a product made from scratch to hopefully give the struggling company a brand new start in the 3D accelerator market. In some ways, it must have seemed hopeless. NVIDIA's new GPU could texture twice as many pixels as their last one every clock cycle. The number of cycles jumped up 67% to set a new core speed record of 200 MHz. ATI came up just short of this milestone, running their Radeon DDR64 MB at 183 MHz, but with a decidedly weaker dual pipeline architecture and a total of six texture mapping units, a good chunk less than the eight the GeForce 2 was sporting. As you can see, this resulted in a large difference in theoretical fill rates. Where the Radeon shined was in memory bandwidth and the underlying technology behind it. At 366 MHz DDR speeds, its memory was a little faster than the GeForce 2 GTS's at 333 MHz. But the real magic was in its introduction of Hyper-Z technologies, which threw in a bevy of efficiency advantages in the form of Z-buffer and lossless color compression, as well as the very first implementation of geometry calling. This was a very clever way to take advantage of the Radeon's integration of hardware TNLs support, allowing the chip to discard invisible polygons since it was already tasked with setting up 3D scenes during the TNL process anyway. The compression technologies meant that not only was the Radeon using less memory bandwidth to get the job done, it was also taking up less VRAM doing it. This was especially useful in 32-bit color mode, already something ATI did well in with previous RAGE 128 based cards. Um, but grown further to allow the Radeon to take almost no performance loss when switching from 16-bit color. The Radeon I'll be using is a true blue sample of the flagship consumer card, the 64MB DDR Edition complete with the original cooler and the Rage Theater TV input and output feature. The GeForce 2 GTS I'll be using is actually a GeForce 2 Ultra that I've downclocked and so it comes equipped with 64MB of memory, which should make this a fairer fight than if I went and got the 32MB first edition card. So a word about testing. The goal at Pixel Pipes is to evaluate each card's true performance using CPUs that are much more powerful and drivers that are more mature than what was available at the time of launch in the hopes of learning something new about them. We do not use error-appropriate systems for this reason. Please check the video description for test system details. So in 3 d Mark 2000, we see the raw power of the GeForce 2 GTS when running in 16-bit color mode, as it decimates the Radeon score by over 57%. This is definitely not playing to the Radeon's strengths, but we'll see in the other tests that 32-bit color is a different story entirely. 3 d Mark 2001 shows a much more even match, as the default test enforces 32-bit color as the standard. By the time these cards were relevant, this is the mode most gamers would have chose, as the cards had more than enough grunt to handle it. The Radeon was competitive in such circumstances, although it doesn't win, as we can see here, losing by over 500 points. 
Next we have Quake 2, and while largely an outdated test by 2000, it does show how the Radeon did with this popular engine. Again, it doesn't win against the GeForce 2, but it's only beat by about 19%, which isn't significant at these frame rates. We see about the same margin of difference in Quake 3, with the GeForce 2 GTS getting 11 frames more on average than the Radeon, again a 19% advantage. In Medal of Honor Allied Assault, the GeForce 2 maintains a consistent lead, and during gameplay it delivered fewer dips in frame rate during heavy particle effects. Serious Sam The Second Encounter is one of the few games tailored for ATI hardware. By enabling triple texturing mode and the advanced rendering options, the Radeon is able to leverage the three texture units in each of its pixel pipes to their optimum level, edging out the GeForce 2 GTS here even though we're using OpenGL, usually a weakness of ATI cards. Unreal Tournament returns things back to normal with another win for Nvidia's champ, a 23% margin here. Then we have Unreal Tournament 2004, and here I tried something a little different, tracking performance across multiple resolutions. The cards actually perform neck and neck with each other, but it's interesting to see the Radeon scaling a tiny bit better with resolution. This was actually typical for the Radeon in most games. Let me know if you prefer graphs like this, or if you'd rather keep it simple with one resolution. Then, Half-Life 2 shows these cards could handle future games with good legacy support, and Valve during this time was typically more friendly to ATI's hardware, and that bears fruit here. It's only a few frames difference, but the Radeon will happily take whatever win it can get. So, yeah, unfortunately we couldn't change how the story ends for the Radeon DDR64MB, as even with newer drivers, a faster processor, and a few newer games, the GeForce 2 GTS still takes the crown by a reasonable margin most of the time. The Radeon had a great showing, however, getting closer than any other company to usurping NVIDIA's position, and looks even better when you examine its features. NVIDIA liked to tout their shader rasterizer, which allowed per-pixel-based techniques to be efficiently processed and enabling effects such as specular highlights, shadow maps, and advanced bump mapping. ATI called their equivalent feature set the Pixel Tapestry Architecture, and in fact, they could support more advanced features such as environmental bump mapping, as you can see here in their Radeon Arc demo. Check out the reflections on the floor here. This is done without any programmable pixel shaders, and it's well ahead of its time. One downside if you want to own the first Radeon as it was originally released with its classic heatsink and fan is the noise. I have two cards like this and both are almost unbearably whiny. You can hear this clear in the other room. Compare that to the GeForce 2 which can't really be heard over the other fans in the case. There are versions with the newer cooler available, likely from OEMs, but these may only be running at 166 MHz, not the full 183. The next factor to consider is rarity. The original Radeon, or Radeon 7200 as was eventually renamed, can be difficult to find in the retail form. I find they tend to be some of the most badly labeled auctions on eBay, but searching for Rage 6 or R6 helps a lot with getting results, as the sellers often read those terms off of the SKU sticker. Incidentally, Rage 6 was one of the internal code names for the card during development. Conversely, the GeForce 2 GTS is plentiful, with a huge number of variants and manufacturers, most at very reasonable prices. As a tip, I suggest searching for GeForce 2 AGP, with some minus tickers for MX and FX to weed out most of the unwanted stuff. Don't bother including GTS or any other more specific moniker. And to be perfectly frank, driver consistency tends to be a little better on GeForce 2 cards, with less performance and rendering issues overall. You really have to play around with different catalyst drivers to get the Radeon 7200 to do everything right in most games, and it can be a little annoying. Just as a side note, the 7200 name is appropriate for any R100 based ATI card and can be used interchangeably as it was officially and retroactively rebranded as such in newer drivers. It isn't only the name of later OEM SDR variants, as some believe. 
As much love and respect as I have for the original Radeon, it's hard for me to recommend actually using one in a retro system. Time has not afforded it a more favorable position next to the GeForce 2 GTS. And mixed with the other realities of actually acquiring and using one of these cards, my recommendation goes firmly to NVIDIA. But collectors, take notice. The Radeon is a must own, and for good reason. It was still very fast in its day. It brought historic changes to GPU architectures. And of course, it was the first to launch the Radeon ship, still going strong almost two decades later. That's it for this edition of Card Battles. Hope you enjoyed it. And if so, give me a thumbs up and chat with me in the comment section. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Nathan, and this has been Pixel Pipes.